Good morning, dear archers. Today, another bow review, and today finally arrived the Bowman bow, the American semi longbow heel style bow from Fairbow USA. It may be one that I can test it. What you first off get is a really beautiful two colored sleeve, black and white, and it's very thick, nice material. So I think the bow feels very safe and warm and cushy inside. That's nice. Then what you get is, oh, oh, oh look at this, the bowman bow. Black on the back, white on the belly with the sticker on it, bowman bow. You have a leather handle. The handle is slightly dashed. You have a short, small arrow pass, arrow rest, and at 29 inches it has 52 pounds. At my draw length 28, it's 48 pounds. So you see the last inch is already four pounds. But I show you in the draw curve because Fairbo does draw curves for his bows, which I like a lot, and I don't have to do it. Really nice. And then you see here bamboo then there is some stabilizing layers in it this is all bamboo and here this end cap is cocobolo i think or something you see the glass runs here on the fade out in here and here it runs through and this one looks quite elegant here goes nice and narrow together the handle is four inches as it's supposed to be just a hand width which is nice too if, of course, you go on competitions, then this is, will be not allowed. So optionally, you can tell him that he leave this on the belly, that you can't use it for aiming. You know? But I think you don't go on a competition with this bow. You only want to have the heel style shooting experience. So what you get the bow, the sleeve, a nice string, which is Dacron, which is a fast flight string. And it's an endless string, which I like. Gives your bow more oomph and a Flemish splice. So there's no no drilling, no twisting, no something. Oh, you, you did I make no knot in it? Huh? So this string is simply just in, so you don't need to twist or something. Really nice, white and fancy. I like. What else do you get? Or what else did I get? Let's say a lot of papers from the Dutch Warbow Society, which I will never be part of because I only play with toy bows. You get the feather cutting template leaflet and another Fairbow traditional archery leaflet with a lot of stuff. So I like primitive bows, Native American bows, what he is all doing and the rebel and vortex and stuff, really nice. So always a lot to read, I like. What else did Mama pack? I got, and this is a nice thing, if you want the rebel or the, the bowman bow, you can have always the glove for it and um, Margin made now an extra section on the website that you find all articles together. So you get the glove if you want. You can have the Bowman tackle sticker, that's nice. And this is kind of like the Howard Hill shot. We will see that later. You get the arm guard, which is again from the Rebel series, but it's of course used here for the Bowman bow and this is here, fair bow, nice one. And of course we will put this on because we know that this bow is short braced and might do some damage to your wrist. What else do we get? We get a stringer, very important, always use a stringer for your bow. Then what put Margin in? Margin was so kind and put me the cutting tool template for the Bowman feathers in it so I can replace my feathers easily. I got the two stickers, the patches I want to say, Archery School Peter Ustecher and the Howard Hills Longbow Man so I can pimp now my jacket if I want to. <laughs> nice. And what I got is, so almost done, two knocking points, very nice, and a few spare. Uh, arrow tips in 200 grain and a few arrow tips in 125 grain. So this is most probably not the standard what you get, but he sent it to me for test purpose. Boy, so now we need to pack up here again. And what I got, of course, is, and that's the very important part, you get for your Bowman bow, the Bowman style arrows. These are aluminum because I wanted aluminum. You can have them in wood too. They are 28, I didn't even measure them, but they weighed one, they are 400 spine, 
and 610 grain with the 200 grip, 200 grain tip. Of course, I could put not put the 125, then the 75 grain less, then they are 500 something, then they're just 10 grain per pound. So these arrows are now a little on the heavy side, but it's never a bad thing for a hill style bow. You get this nice nox with a big index, five inch fletching, slightly helical, as you see, with a nice white cresting here, so that looks good. And these are these Eastern Legacy. I have some information of them. These are the 2117. They're 12 grain per inch. Really, really nice, but I didn't measure them. So let's see quickly what the length is. Then we go from there. Twenty-nine and a half to the bottom of the knock. <coughs> so a little too long for me, but it's fine. So you better have an inch in front safety than the arrow would be too short. And what I will do, because I have six arrows, I have six arrows I will use with 200 grain tips, uh, three arrows with 200 grain tips and three arrows with the 125 grain tips and then we see what the bow is doing. Good. And what you get, of course, oh, I forgot, look, you get this, all these papers here. I put them here, that I don't forget them and I almost forgot them. You get, first of all, uh, in purchasing the American Simi Longbow, the Bowman by Fairbow, you have acquired the ultimate in true longbow construction. Really nice. And there it's written then what the brace side is. For the 68 inch bow, it's five and I don't know, two, six inches. And no, never over brace your bow. Knocking placement should be approximately one eighth to one quarter of an inch above horizon from knock to shelf. Then we get the four stroke curve, I can show you. It's nice. And you see that the four stroke curve is relatively constant, so it's a linear draw. Only the last inch from 28 to 29, it goes up four pounds. So then you see that the bow gets stiff, but it's fine. Means up to 28, you will have a nice draw experience. And that's all you could ask for. And there is the certificate of authenticity, that it's a Bowman, 52 pounds at 29, right hand. 68 inches knock to knock American Simi Longbow. Its materials are glass, super core bamboo, purple heart, stable core, and the string is fast flight. And then you get do's and don'ts for your traditional bow. And there's then written somewhere that you should use 10 gram per pound. So I wish everything would be in one, all the requirements, what you have to pay attention to for your bow, but it's all there. So you have all information. No excuses, you don't need to look up on the website what the bow is doing or what you have to do. Everything is written there like it. So we have Fairbow, the Bowman American Simi Longbow or the Rebel. It's a laminated bow, has a string length of 65 inches, a brace height of 6. This bow has 6 and a quarter inches. The draw is 48 pounds at 28. Available, I don't know, you need to ask Magen, he does most probably all poundages you could possibly ask for. Max draw is 29, but then it's written 30, so not sure about that, but I guess 29 is the max draw because poundage is written at 29. And recommended error weight is 10 gram per pound. Then we have the string I told you, and the price of this pretty bow is 699 euros. And when you buy more than 500 euros, uh, now everything falls down. Uh, you get shipping free, so you get, actually when you order this bow, shipping is free. This is this, and then of course, uh, as it's the Bowman bow, you should get it like this. If you want to change something because you don't like the black and the white and not the sticker, then simply order a Rebel bow. But if you want the true ultimate Bowman experience, like Peter Stecher thinks the bow should be, this is the way to go. When you see then, the tips are relatively thin. So they are a little thicker, a little wider than we had from the bow from Outlaw Bows. And you see that there is a small bump, there's a reinforcement there. So he makes sure, so he builds the bow very safe. According to Schultz guidelines, the bow should be 68 inches and the bow is 68 inches. But we measure it now because I'm already here. So we measure it directly. Alongside the belly, you know that. Chunker, chunker. 
the American standard of measuring because it's an American semi longbow. 69 inches from knock to knock when I measure it alongside the belly. Arrow pass we don't need to measure, that's fine. And what we want to know is, because Peter told us that the center of the bow, 69 is then 34 and a half. Zit. And 34 and a half is exactly here. And Peter told us that the center of the bow should be maximum an inch below the shelf, below the arrow rest, and this is what we exactly have. Now let's see that we get it strung. On the bottom one we put the pouchy part in, as we know. And uh, so you put the string in the knock groove here, nice and tight. Then you put the pouch part of the the other part comes here, behind the string, obviously. Then you step on it. You hold this one here in place, so, like so, and then you start painting the bow until you can put the string in. Oh, this bow has a lot of tension directly from the beginning. I like that. See, it's in, then you let slowly go. We nice. I like. So, easy peasy and always use the stringer. Now I'm fully braced here. Feels good, took me a while. Uh, most probably I did it wrong here, but it's fine. And I just checked the glove, unfortunately, is size S, so it's not going to work with my finger. Obviously, I need to shoot now, bare hand. So what do we get? We can check at least the weight of the bow. 535. Bow feels good, handle feels just nice as this, with leather and with this slightly dash here. Feels good, and we know that we are about to heal the bow a little. I shoot one of the heavy ones, so you feel the index directly. Nice. And what you have here, look, that's fancy. A small leather strap, which helps you that the arrow doesn't fall off. Must probably made it for me because I have no idea how to shoot. An American style longbow. Let's see. Oh, silent. Nice. Silent night. Night. Hehe, <laughs> nice. Works nice. So we need to put then a knocking point on it, obviously. Oh, so even 600 grain kicks a little. We almost Robin Hood. Let's shoot a lightweight one. It's now with 125 grain. Normally they're 610. Minus 75 is a whatever. Oh yeah, then you feel it even more in the hand. But nice. Swing draw, do it like Howard. Oh, nice. What I can tell for now, it's a precision tool on five meters. <laughs> it's not fancy. I didn't get a re uh, replacement knock, so I need to order a few of these knocks. Because it's easy to Robin Hood them. What you should directly get is obviously a hill style quiver that you have the whole hill style experience. The heavy arrows. Back tension. See that? Lightweight ones. Ah, so now the boat draws a little nice. So it's nice. Draw experience. Nice. See? 28. And then 29 you feel it so but that's a nice 28 i like don't know if i even hit now my arm here but when you do it properly i guess it's not going to happen really good day two got myself a glove because without glove this bow is not a big pleasure to shoot so i use an old one of mine 
doesn't fit that perfectly, but for now has to do the job. Let's go. And we start with the heavy arrows again. To get used to it first, it's not a horse bow. <laughs> first few shots, warm up round. Yep, now I have it. Yeah, 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 it took me three arrows. Yep, now it's working. Nice. I thought this bow is nice. Today it's a little heavy. The heavy arrows, not the fastest. Oh, now the target might skip and then I break another arrow, huh? Yep. Yeah, still last. <laughs> So it's getting too high now. Lightweight arrows. Oh, that was a bad shot. You saw the release. Yeah, I feel the focus and it works. No problem. Simply my bad form. I need more shots with this one. So you hear the high sound. So the, the string is relatively hard. Gives you a nice clean shot, but as you hear it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There is vibration going on, but this it's a bow, you, you get a little vibration in it. But it's not so uncomfortable, you have this leather around the handle. Let's see, 28 meters, 30 meters, kind of. The heavy arrows. Yeah, the direction is okay. Only now I need to compensate for the distance. I need to get the feeling for the bow. <laughs> Did I, say I need to get the feeling for the bow? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, overcompensating, but this is how you get used to it through practice. Yep. So a few shots, this bow is very precisely. Uh, try to heal now the bow more. So what they say with a hill style bow, you need to heal the bow doesn't work for me yet properly, but you get there. Margin did already, of course, speed test with this bow, but only to see what I get out of it. You know, there are a few factors come into play, which might show a different result. 620 grain, 48 pounds. 152. Hundred fifty six. The lightweight ones with the hundred twenty five grain, they are then five hundred sixty five hundred thirty something. Hundred sixty one and oops, hundred fifty nine. So 160 foot pairs with the lightweight ones, 150 ish with the 610 grain. They are really heavy, but this bow likes heavy arrows. It's a joy to shoot, and these aluminum arrows, these Eastern Legacy, they really work great. So they, these arrows are nice. Fletching is nice. Everything is good. So the swing draw. Now I need to try the swing draw. <laughs> Missed the target. <laughs> yeah, okay. We need to do that again. Yep, works better. 
So this is something you can practice. Check the videos how Howard Hill shoots or from John Schultz. Hit him like Howard. He explains this swing draw, which is typical for how Howard Hill shot. Oh, that was a bad shot, but you saw that. So always make sure you reach your anchor point. Heal the bow. And then the bow is very precisely. So my group is kind of today all over the place, but <laughs> way too early for this challenge, but let's see if we can hit this small tennis ball there on 15 meters. Oh, way off. Where is my focus today? Huh? Oops. Ay, ay, ay. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. Hit the stick, not the ball. Ah, yeah, I should be today. Only one thing. These cresting stickers, they come off here. Maybe it's a humidity here. But it's a fun shooter. And once you throw properly, and here we go. So it's a little demanding in the beginning. It's nothing out of the world, but you really need to be focused when you shoot. But you should be with every bow. That's it. The Bowman bow, a legendary Bowman bow by Ferbo. I'll put this glove away. So, and you want to have a really sturdy glove like the one you get from Ferbo. This one is way too thin. It's not really working. Doesn't give you the cleanest release possible. So this bow is pretty. Very well made, very reduced. I like this, so not many fancy colors, only this cap here, black, white, I like. Handle feels good. You have this small safety thingy here that the arrow doesn't come off. For my taste, the shelf is already a little deep. Doesn't need to be, I think I saw both from Howard Hill. They have only like half of this as an arrow shelf, which is fully enough, but I understand. Some people want to go as close to center shot as possible. Would not be needed for me. The rest, here we have elegant lines. I like that. It's a beautiful bow, works nicely. I only need always a few shots that I get used to it. And you really need to hold this bow properly. So this one, you know, I'm always used to my thrift here. You really, you need to heal the bow, hold the bow tight. So this is a little different. I always need to get used to it first because I like to shoot like this, as you know. But for the rest, this bow is really, it's a straight, there's nothing, nothing to complain. The arrows, these aluminum arrows are really nice. Here with the 200 grain tip, there are 610 grain in total, which is for a 48 bow, quite heavy. But as I said, the bow likes heavy arrows. Fletching is helical, looks nice. The only thing, the stickers come off here and he secures the front part of the feather with a drop of super glue that's nice so even there well done can't complain about that did i tell you how much this stuff costs no i don't think so uh, you can have these omen arrows six of them in aluminium they are 89 euros and in wood you can have them then they're 75 i would really take them in aluminium they feel really nice and they fly good the glove i don't have it here now but you saw the glove is 20 19 euro 95 so 20 euros and the arm guard i forgot today but i didn't shoot myself so that's a good sign it's a good bow i didn't shoot myself i forgot the arm guard uh, the arm guard is 20 euros the rebel arm guard it's and you find everything on the website uh, on the there's now a special page for the bowman bow where you find all the Bowman bows which are in stock and all this equipment. I'm not sure if now the hill style quiver is already in, but you can check it out. That would be the next thing. It really makes sense to have a hill style quiver that you draw, you load, you shoot, you draw, <laughs> you know, you load, you shoot. Makes sense. So it doesn't make sense to shoot out of the belt. You want to control these arrows just by the knock and then it really makes sense to shoot this bow. You have them in your hill style back quiver. You draw them, you put them on and you're ready to go. Easy peasy. Now let's shoot one more time because it's... Oh, but 
without glove this string really bites so you want to have a glove for this one or you have fingers but I don't have colors enough anymore for that good shall we go for the rating packaging a bow a string a sleeve knocking points description draw curve I count the draw curve extra because this is really takes time but you get a draw curve so you have so it's 10 points handling of this bow it has a little when you see it you see that that it goes a little flexes a little towards so it's not a back set I guess you call it so it's stringing with the stringer is fine step through method no please you could use this method where you put this you know like you string a long bow you put this one on your shoe and then you pull it back like this this is you can do then you don't twist the bow that's fine for the rest always use the stringer nice so stringing is okay handling of this bow you there's nothing to do so you string the bow of course you make sure that you have no knocking point on it which i will do now later and then you're ready to go so for the comparison with the other hill style bow i have from outlaw bows jesus christ what is here so dirty now oh, the grass is dirty the hay bales are dirty don't want to make my bow now dirty uh, for that i will put the knocking point on and then we will do a quick comparison of design you know like design features like the tips and handle and overall performance but handling of this bow it's a 10. the build is it's a fair bow bow it's magen doesn't let anything out of his workshop which is not perfect even the c-shaped bow i still have yes i still have uh, is just made wonderfully this is margin and you see the signature of of margin in this bow so the build is really nice really well made so 10. the basic feel of this bow it's, for me it's a little learning curve because i <laughs> didn't shoot these bows for a while or that much so I'm more you know you know me but after and I directly without warming up I shot today directly once you get used to it again and you know how to hold the bow then this thing is a charm you can shoot extremely precisely with this one so it's where you point where you look at the arrow will go you only need to make sure your back tension is there and you have a nice release which I didn't all the time but that's mine that's me that's why basic feel 10 the draw experience of this bow is really nice so you see the draw curve up to 28 inches it goes really nice even up and then only from 28 to 29 it has a slight jump this last inch it goes up four pounds so you see that you reach then the limit of the bow but as long as you're in 28 28 and a half inch draw this bow just draws really nice 10 and I wanted a 28 inch bow so that's why it's fine for me you have a little safety that the bow will not break when you draw 20 and a half so even 29 inches is doable most probably even 30 inches so you have a little safety built in even in the tips they are for a hill style bow good shaped so even there this is a safe built bow no problem with that draw experience nice shooting experience it has hand shock and it has vibration I cannot deny it it's not annoying I mean you know this is 600 grain arrows is fine once they get a little more lightweight you feel it directly more so I would always go with heavy arrows but then of course you lack a little speed and for this I give you nine points because it's really there and it really you plug the string and this thing vibrates for 10 seconds of course you don't feel the hand shock that much as long as you keep your elbow down as we know that so if you stand of course straight then this vibration goes into your neck you keep this hinge here unlocked then it's better but yet it's there that's why nine then we have 59 points and price value 600 was it no seven 700 euros 
It's in the price range of when you order one in America, they are, I think they start $800, $850. And then of course you can have them custom made, whatever, yeah, they are like this one too. Um, and then, but then it's not the Bowman bow, you know, you don't get this in America. The one with these stickers and with this optic, with these features, you get just here. And especially for the Europeans, you don't have to worry about customs and not this horrendous stupidest shipping costs from America especially then with a longer piece of gear it's hilarious then you pay almost $200 shipping from America I had this because I asked Greg, Greg Akin uh, for a bow and said yeah this and $180 shipping you know that's that price value that's why 700 euros for me for what you get is okay gets a five out of five this is, I think, the closest you can get to a hill style experience, at least for my knowledge from a European bow maker. And this means something. So you don't have customs, you don't have this horrendous shipping costs. I don't know what shipping is now from, uh, shipping is free, exactly. More than 500 euros, shipping is free. So you don't have even shipping costs. So it's 700 euros to your doorstep and that's fine in Europe. So then you can't complain about that. So you're safe with the costs. Get directly a bunch of arrows. I would get 12 with it. The aluminum ones, matching ones. For me, they are a little too heavy for the speed, but for the shooting comfort, the 610 grain are just nice because they take away a little of this oomph. Rest, string, nice. Everything is really nice on this bow. So I think I told you everything I have to tell you. Next will be a quick comparison between this one and the Outlaw Hill Style Bow, which is three inches longer. We do comparison and we see which one feels better. But this one is really, I can see that you get even addicted to a bow like this. If you want to shoot this bow all the time and it's really nice. And 50 pounds for me is just limit. Most probably I won't shoot it two hours, but well done, Margin and Peter. So proud of you that you have now your own Bowman series. Go check him out on the website. There's everything, get everything directly the, the matching arm guard, the matching glove, not this one. Get the hill style quiver, get a set of arrows, get a whole set. You know, shipping is anyways free. So then you have this hole. Then check the videos about this swing draw from Howard Hill. Hopefully it doesn't flip the hand. Swing draw. It's nice needs a little practice especially when you come from different shooting styles but i will do practice this obviously i will perfection it and then i will show you later <laughs> so thank you very much margin really thank you for sending this bow to me and all the other uh, equipment and stuff i really appreciate that so i could get my hands on this bow thank you peter for having this idea for getting together with margin and creating this series I think it's nice, you know, this, then you have something unique, even if you have already a rebel bow, the bowman bow is still something unique. And when you know that the bowman bow with the bowman was already in China and South Korea, so, you know, this bow has kind of like a little history to it. So it's nice to have this piece of history. And what Peter asked me yesterday, if it's glossy, the surface or not it's not gloss it's semi gloss i'm not sure if you see it if this if you pick it up it's like a semi gloss so it's not really completely shiny would be nice maybe if it would be completely shiny but this is how margin is doing it and for me it's fine of course if you are a showman the bowman you will have to have this completely polished and shiny and this polished and shiny because on camera on stage you want to shine. This one is most probably a compromise when you go for tournaments that you don't have reflections and whatever, what have you. I don't know all the background of this stuff, but it is what it is and it's good. It's fun. And I thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.